When it comes to manufacturing electric vehicles, legacy automakers are scrambling to try to catch Tesla when it comes to not only technology, but also more importantly, when it comes to profitability and they are way behind. In this video, I wanna discuss some of the reasons why Tesla is so profitable when others are not, and also talk about why I believe that Tesla will remain way ahead of legacy auto for the foreseeable future. I'm John, and this is CleanerWatt. Many traditional automakers are finding themselves in a very difficult position right now because they're having to transition to EVs because that's what the market is starting to demand. And their internal combustion engine business is what's providing their income right now for this transition. The problem is they need to race to get their EV production profitable or else they'll be in trouble when their internal combustion engine business ceases to be relevant. I definitely commend the leadership at Ford for being very transparent and for separating out the financials for their EV business and just um, really showing where they are with that business. Um, Jim Farley and the team, they have a great vision for the company, but nonetheless, Ford is losing money on their EV business and it will likely be a few years before they reach profitability. And when it comes to GM, for instance, as far as I can tell, they're also negative when it comes to their EV business. So they have to race to get to profitability or else they'll be in trouble in the near future. While Tesla was once in that same boat, they have figured out how to be massively profitable. And this is one of the key tools that allows Tesla to grow so quickly. Trying to catch Tesla really is a moving target. And really the better goal right now is a goal for survival, not just catching Tesla because catching Tesla, at least for the foreseeable future, looks like something that's not very attainable. But survival is very attainable but it requires profitable manufacturing. In Tesla's Q1 2023 investor update presentation, Tesla revealed that for the first quarter of 2023, their entire business had a gap gross margin of 19.3%. While that number was down a little bit from previous quarters, that still is quite impressive. When it comes to General Motors and the profitability of their EV business, unlike Ford, they haven't separated out their financials for their EV business, so we don't have the exact financials. However, their CEO, Mary Barra, recently spoke at the Sanford Bernstein Conference, and according to this Reuters article, which was published on June 2nd, quote, Barra acknowledged that Tesla Incorporated has the lead in EV technology, profitability, and scale, but said that lead is not permanent. EV battery costs are still too high to build profitable mass market vehicles that sell for $30,000 to $40,000, Barra said, but she predicted EV and combustion vehicle costs will equalize sometime in the latter part of this decade, maybe a little longer. And remember that the upcoming Equinox EV base model is supposed to start at around $30,000 and the soon to be retired Bolt EUV and EV both start at under $30,000 and the upcoming Blazer EV is supposed to start at around $45,000. So it's obvious that the Bolt EUV and EV are not profitable, but also apparently the lower trims of GM's new electric vehicles will not be profitable uh, for a while as well. While Mary is right about battery costs needing to come down for uh, inexpensive profitable vehicles, there are several ways to look at this. Just because batteries are more expensive doesn't mean you can't figure out how to produce a vehicle that is profitable at a low cost. For instance, if you work on efficiency for that vehicle, you can put a smaller battery pack in that vehicle and uh, still achieve a good amount of range. When you look at something like the Model Y versus the Bolt EUV, the Bolt EUV is much smaller than the Model Y and much lighter. And despite that fact, uh, the Model Y is still more efficient than the Bolt EUV. This means that GM has to pack a larger battery pack in the Bolt EUV than would be necessary if it were a more efficient vehicle. With all that being said, and really moving into the reasons why Tesla is able to manufacture electric vehicles so profitably when others 
are not. This really leads me into one of the first key advantages that Tesla has and something that they focused on for some time, and that comes down to vehicle efficiency. In order for an electric vehicle to be extremely efficient, like Tesla's electric vehicles, a lot of things have to come together. You need to consolidate components to save weight. You need more efficient drivetrains, and you also need more aerodynamic designs that look great too. When all these things come together, you achieve a vehicle like for instance, the Model Y, which is rated at up to 330 miles of EPA rated range here in the United States uh, for the long range all wheel drive version. And that vehicle is much more efficient than much of the competition, like for instance, the Mustang Mach-E, etc. One of the best ways to look at efficiency is to look at how many miles these vehicles can travel per kilowatt hour of battery capacity. And according to my research, the Tesla Model Y, the long range all wheel drive version, has approximately 79 kilowatt hours of usable capacity in that battery pack. If you do the math with an EPA rated range of 330 miles, that means that vehicle can travel around 4.18 miles per kilowatt hour according to the EPA rating. As you can see, these numbers are much more efficient than even the much smaller Bolt EUV, the Ford Mustang Mach-E and the VW ID4. If the average cost per kilowatt hour for a finished battery pack for a manufacturer is around $130, you do the math here and you can see that this is a huge advantage to be able to offer a 300 plus mile range electric vehicle that has um, great efficiency because it allows you to have a smaller battery pack than the competition, which allows you to pay less for that battery pack and that gives you the ability to make more profit. EV efficiency really is super important when it comes to EV profitability. Another reason why Tesla is so profitable on EV manufacturing when others are not comes down to manufacturing efficiency itself. Tesla has not only been focused in on improving the mile per kilowatt hour efficiency, but also manufacturing cost per vehicle efficiency. Tesla's factories are becoming more and more efficient over time, and their newer factories like Giga Shanghai are showing what is possible when Tesla builds a factory from the ground up. Also, innovations like underbody castings are greatly reducing manufacturing cost. And really, this is just the beginning because it should get much better with Tesla's new modular unboxed manufacturing process. And with their next generation of EVs, Tesla aims to even more drastically reduce manufacturing costs. Vertical integration is also a key that has made Tesla profitable when others are not. This goes right along with manufacturing efficiency. Tesla has vertically integrated many aspects of their business, and while initial costs are high when it comes to manufacturing your own components, this allows for no extra markup and also allows for consolidation of parts, like for example in Tesla's electrical controllers that make up the electrical system in their vehicles. Tesla's direct sales model is also a big reason for their profitability. Having a direct sales model is not only better for the customer, but it's also better for the bottom line. Legacy automakers have to be able to sell a vehicle to a dealer at a low enough price for the dealer to also make a profit on the vehicle. Tesla may have a bit of extra cost due to running their own sales network and physical locations, but Tesla's retail locations are generally quite small as compared to the average size of a car dealership, and likely most of Tesla's orders come from online. So beyond vehicle efficiency, manufacturing efficiency, they also have um, other efficiencies built into the business, including their direct sales model. Another key reason for Tesla's profitability comes down to their simplified model availability. Unlike most legacy automakers that have far too many model variations, which add unnecessary complexities on the manufacturing end, Tesla has chosen to keep their options simple and only offers a small number of variations for each vehicle model. Fewer options can help simplify an already complicated supply chain, and it saves time by eliminating the need to switch over from variant to variant on a production line. This is something that Ford plans to emulate with their next generation of EVs, according to their CEO, Jim Farley. Tesla's revenue from software also helps their bottom line, and I believe it will make even a bigger difference in the future. 
Tesla is not the first to offer premium connectivity subscriptions, but no other company has a software upgrade that has the potential to be as valuable as Tesla's full self-driving package could be in the future. Tesla currently sells the FSD upgrade for $15,000 USD, and this can be added after the sell. In addition, if you want the FSD upgrade and you don't want to plop down $15,000, you can also subscribe monthly and pay a monthly fee to get that, and that's good recurring income for Tesla. Tesla also offers an enhanced autopilot upgrade for an additional $6,000, which adds features to the basic autopilot. This is a huge boost to margins every time Tesla sells one of these upgrades. When it comes to Ford, they are working on their software business and they plan to offer quite a few paid software features, especially in the Ford Pro business unit in the future. So Ford is focusing on this. I personally believe that Legacy Auto will not be able to catch up to Tesla for the foreseeable future because Tesla is not slowing down. They're just getting better and better with time. If you paid attention to the Tesla Investor Day event this year, that event was really all about how Tesla was continuing to improve their products while also reducing the cost to manufacture them at the same time. While this seems like a conflicting goal, lowering cost and improving the product, Tesla is proving that that is possible. But you need really smart and talented engineers to do so. But thankfully, the top engineering talent wants to work at Tesla. Now, as we wrap this up, I do want to cover a huge milestone that Tesla recently achieved with the Model Y. You probably saw the headlines, but as Reuters reported on May 30th, um, the Model Y was ranked first in global sales, and it even beat out the Toyota Corolla for the first quarter of 2023 when it comes to the best-selling vehicles, once again, globally. With all that being said, I didn't even mention Tesla's energy business in all this, which also has a huge potential for Tesla's future as well. At some point, Legacy Auto, I believe, will come to profitability, but catching Tesla doesn't look like something that will happen, in my opinion, in the foreseeable future. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. And also, I want to say a special thank you to all of those of you who support me on Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and really does help make these videos possible. And if you'd like to find out more about how you can also support my work through Patreon, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.